This is a video about the speech processing in Linrad. It is a 32-bit version of Debian 8 installed on a modern computer with a lot of processing power. Uh, I start Linrad here. And I don't want to be an expert, just a normal user. And I make the font scale a little bit bigger than I normally do. I put a 3 here. And of course we use the faster graphics. And I don't block any uh, CPU cores. Uh, maybe I will remove this option. I'm not so sure it actually is good to use it anytime. And I want to specify the screen as a percentage, that's N. So let's make it 75% in both dimensions. Process priority 0, normal pro. And here is now Linrad running. Uh, Let's go here and press F11 to make a lot of white on the screen. Oops. I have to have Linrad in the foreground and a big white screen behind it. Let's see. Oh, like that. The white is to make the camera uh, a little bit better because I cannot control the brightness of the camera. I don't know how to do that and maybe it's not even possible. So here is Linrod and I save the parameters up to this state, that's W. And to set up the transmitter it's necessary to set up the receiver first. So I press U. And then A and A for sound card. And I don't use port audio, so I say no. And here are all the sound cards. And now I see they are not coming in the order I want. And that's because I have forgotten to tell Alsa how to number the sound cards. Uh, if I don't tell ALSA it will number them differently after each reboot so the parameters wouldn't be stable and I would have to do the setup each time the system is rebooted. So go to that first uh, to know how to set up ALSA uh, look at this file uh, I use the Joe editor uh, Z underscore A L some dot text and here are the instructions uh, and what I need to know is uh, what are the modules we have. So take this string, copy and open one more terminal and make root. And then look at this file. Oh, just type it. And here we have the different sound modules that are loaded now and what device numbers they have. So I uh, look in this ALSA text file what to do next and it is uh, edit this file Co 
copy and then I want to write options, uh, module and index and the number. So I leave this and then edit the configuration file. Seems we did not have one before, so it's being created now. Uh, then these are the modules. And sometimes the mouse doesn't work properly. Copy and paste. And then these lines should say oh, and I want this one to be device uh, index equals o comma one and then I want this one. That's the delta 44 and I make that the number 2. And this is the uh, sound blaster card. And finally the USB Sound Blaster card. And I gave them numbers two, three, and four. I save this. And now I have to reboot. After a reboot, uh, and then back to the sound card setup, I have the cards in the order I'm used to see. And what order doesn't matter, but this is the convention I have for all the operating systems on this computer. So I can copy the parameter files from one operating system to another. So the input for the receiver, that is the Delta 44, uh, that's 5, and at the maximum rate, that's 96 kilohertz, and I'm setting it up now for the soft rock ensemble. So there will be two audio channels for one RF channel. That's two. And there's no time shift between I and Q. And at this moment I tell Linrad that I don't have the soft rock because I'm moving the hardware between the computers and I don't want to have the uh, control functions for the SE 570 uh, to worry about at this time. And then uh, for the output B, I don't use port audio, normally never under Linux, uh, unless I want to use Jack or uh, maybe something else that is only through port audio. So no, and then the motherboard sound card that is zero. And then X, X and W to save this. And I set up a little bit more on the receiver first, that is D, uh, to select SSB mode. And I want fairly fast processing because 
uh, I'm going to set up the speech processor for fast break-in mode. So let's make the bandwidth uh, 500 Hertz. Sorry, 500 Hertz. And uh, I make this window 3. And uh, I don't think I worry about anything else. The first mix of bandwidth reduction. We have now uh, raw data at 96 kilohertz. I reduce that by a factor of 2 by making this parameter 1. 2 to power 1, so it's 48 kilohertz for the baseband. And here is what we see. Uh, and as you see, nothing. Uh, this is typical for the Delta 44 in Linux. I have to uh, go somewhere. Well, I can do it here. I open one more window and start the program Alsa Mixer. Sorry. Uh, set user root, give it my password, and then Alsa Mixer. And I have to select the sound card, F6, and the Delta 44. And here you can see the gain controls are all set to zero. So I have to put some something here. Let's say zero. And I'm not using these inputs, no, now, but I set some reasonable value anyway, because otherwise I may forget when I do other things. And we also want to enable the outputs uh, at some reasonable level, all of them. And to have channels balanced, I set them all to the same number. This should be 58. And now something is happening. I please escape to leave this Alsa mixer. And here is some kind of signal. Uh, it comes from a signal generator. So it's one and a half kilohertz and it goes only into one of the channels of the Delta 44. I can now start a second signal generators. Then you can see the signal is on off keyed here. And if I click on it, You can hear the keying on off. Now, uh, since I want a fast system, I have to set uh, parameters differently. But first, I will have a look at uh, what is the timing here. Here is the timing. The upper trace is the signal going into the Delta 44. And the lower trace is what comes out from the motherboard sound card. And as you can see here, uh, the delay is about 165 milliseconds. So, when I look at the Linrod screen, here, I can press T for timing. And then read here that the delay is 165 milliseconds, about. That's a very long delay in uh, uh, quick talking with fast break-in and 
so so I have to change parameters to make the transform size uh, smaller in the baseband and to do that I need to separate the bins in the display or to make this window smaller so I go here and click like this and now the Fourier transform size is smaller and the time is now down at 120 milliseconds about but the margin is uh, 80 milliseconds that's far too much so I press X and P for parameters and tell Linrad I don't want much margin so let's say 5 milliseconds only we will see whether that is not enough or whether it works here and it became 13 for a total delay of about 50 uh, that could be okay and the bandwidth is about 2 kilohertz so this is reasonable for SSB mode as a starting point uh, the oscilloscope shows like this with a delay of 56 milliseconds that's a little bit more than really nice but that we can start with I will now go to the transmit side X, X and I forgot to save parameters for the sound card setup I think so I press W so I don't lose them if something goes wrong and then setting the transmit side sound cards the transmit setup is V what? ah I have forgotten uh, I have to be an expert in order to be allowed to use the transmitter so uh, S and you are in normal mode press yes and then font scale 3 and yes and 0 uh, and no 75 75 process priority 0 and no auto start then I have to save the parameters so they don't get lost and then go for transmit setup V and first I have to set up the output and that's A and enable transmit while running receive modes yes this is what I normally would do but uh, at this time I'm not going to do it because uh, I'm going to do various experiments so it's better to not have the receive side running in parallel because for example changing the sampling rate on one card may change something on another port when it's used for both input and output at different places so I say no here and that's just while demonstrating the setup of the speech processor and don't use port audio and output has to be the port delta 44 5 and 96 kilohertz and I want two channels I and Q and the input B uh, without port audio and the motherboard sound card zero and sample rate uh, I can start by setting 98 kilo uh, sorry 96 kilohertz 
and I make it uh, 4 bytes per sample. And then there is a feature for controlling fast antenna switching and I have to feed something in here and we'll talk about that later on in another video. X and save parameters again and now V and C for the speech processor setup and here you can see the CADE signal coming and going uh, and To hear it, I press F3 to enable the loudspeaker. Sorry. And here we are. And the timing now with default parameters is like we can see here. Uh, The delay is about 100 milliseconds. That's too much uh, because it's now 150 altogether between receiver, between transmit and when the signal comes back in the headphones. It should be uh, about 100 milliseconds or maybe a little bit more, but not much. So. Uh, the first thing I can do to make the response a little bit faster, uh, I can show that when going to the receive side, uh, X, X, and D, and then I press T for timing here, and you can see the AD and the DA, uh, DMA rates that's related to the size of the buffers used in the sound cards that is about 200 Hertz. Uh, I can force smaller buffers that is X, X and then U and uh, Linrad has selected about 200 Hertz although the permitted range is from 30 Hertz to 300. That's because I have selected sizes that are fairly uh, small for the transforms means I want a fast system but I, but I can force it faster that's C and let's say I want 2 kilohertz and then X X and I save that change and go for the receiver and click on the signal. Uh, when looking at the timing, it now tells me the total time should be about 20 milliseconds. And on the oscilloscope, uh, it tells me it's about, well, about 26 or 27 and that's not bad so there was a significant improvement by making buffers smaller for the receiver and then going to the transmit side X X V and C and then F3 uh, to enable the output. You can see here ADC and DAC. They are now 0.3 milliseconds. That's the length of the buffers. And timing now is 95 milliseconds or something like that. Uh, the FFT block 
is now 10 milliseconds. Uh, that means that the bin bandwidth is about 100 hertz. The delay margin is uh, 24 milliseconds. That's a little bit more than required. So I want to change those times and that is under the ALC menu. So I press P to get there. Uh, note this one is now highlighted and when I press P it's here what is highlighted. And uh, here I can change the FFT time span by pressing U and then I enter 5 milliseconds. It comes in factors of 2. And it says that the margin is 30. So I press D and change it to, let's say, 10. And then look at the oscilloscope. And uh, move the cursors. Now the delay on the transmit side is 45 milliseconds approximately, plus, I don't remember, 25 on the receive side. It means from microphone input out through the antenna back into the three through into the receiver and up to the earphones is well below 100 milliseconds so this is very good for uh, listening between words i have not been able to find out how to do screencasts under linux so i have moved to windows this is XP 32-bit and the setup is as you can see on the screen the Delta 44 on the receive side for input uh, with the MME drivers they are fast and then the output is with port audio and the WDMKS drivers and they are not so fast but that's the best I can do with these sound cards at the moment. Uh, so what I have, if I press D, and it's the same setup as I had in Linux parameters, and press T, and I see that the time should be about 25 uh, milliseconds. And when I look at the oscilloscope, I see that it is more like 60 milliseconds. So there are additional buffers on the output as there often is in uh, and in Windows. But now I'm going to go through the setup and timing doesn't matter for that. So I go for the transmit setup and V and I press B. Here you have the configuration the Delta 44 ASIO driver for the output that is fast and then uh, the MME for the input from the motherboard and that's reasonably fast also. So X and then I go V and C for the setup and I press F3 to uh, enable the loudspeaker and the oscilloscope it shows me now that the time is about 57 milliseconds and that's okay for the transmitter so I need something else for the loudspeaker output on the receive side. 
Uh, and here I have a, a screen casting facility, so I will reconnect cables. The first step of the speech processor is to set the suitable gain on the hardware. Uh, that's done with the volume control for the sound card. And to do that, I have the first menu, which we get by pressing M, and it's highlighted sound card. As it happens with this microphone, uh, I need full volume on the microphone to be able to uh, get a suitable level on this voice signal. I have to shout, ah, really heavily into the mic microphone. I'm holding it very close to my mouth. So this could be a reasonable setting uh, because normal talking is like this and you can see it's at about uh, 10 dB uh, below clipping where my voice is normally, but occasionally it reaches a little bit higher, but not normally clipping in the audio. So get rid of this. And the recording now is the output of the speech processor, uh, which is sent into the uh, screen capture software. Uh, what I can look at uh, here, uh, what we have first, this is just the time function of the voice. It's the function one. You can see here it is white, so it generates a white uh, graph on the screen. Uh, I can press now a uh, two. Then I get the spectrum of my microphone signal of my voice, and you can see it's a rather wide spectrum. Uh, I haven't bothered to put the frequency scale here, but if I press three, uh, that is three. Then you can see uh, the spectrum that uh, is selected. So if I whistle, so that's about the spectrum of my voice signal. Uh, and if I look at it uh, in full frequency range, that's number four. Uh, this is the same kind of picture as you saw number two, but here you can see the cutoff frequency where the mouse is now. And uh, I can set the frequency response of the filter of the voice. The lowest frequency now is 200 hertz and the highest 2.5 kilohertz. Uh, I press 5. Here you can see the shape of the filter that is being used. It has a slope of 6 decibels per kilohertz, and then there is some uh, further reduction at very low frequencies, and nothing on the high corner. Uh, so this is what I found is a suitable uh, setting for my voice. The next step of the speech processor setup is the muting function. I press Q for that. And here uh, we are now looking at 5, which is the muted time function. That's not what I want to see. I want to see the MIC filtered spectrum, that's number 3. So here is the spectrum, as we saw before. When I'm quiet, you can see that some points very low here are red. Then I change the threshold, which is F. It's suitable. Now you see, uh, you see that when I'm not saying anything, the spectrum is only red dots. And when I'm talking, you can see there are green ones. Uh, if I whistle, you 
right here that the uh, noise that is on the sides, sideband noise of my whistling, uh, has become weaker. Uh, I'm removing uh, part of the spectrum, but not very severely. Uh, and actually how this sounds, I cannot say yet, because I haven't listened to this recording yet. Uh, just to illustrate what happens if I cut, if I mute harder, I go for it. And, uh, then I make it 65, as you see. Now, uh, only the strongest uh, components of the spectrum survive. And I suspect that this isn't really good quality anymore. Uh, I will go and listen to it and then continue. Uh, it seems reasonable to go for a threshold of 60 for the uh, muting in the frequency domain. Uh, the purpose of muting is, of course, to get the receiver active when uh, what I'm saying is not significant enough. So, uh, the next step in the setup is to look in the time domain and look at what can be done there in uh, removing insignificant uh, parts of the signal. So, uh, the mute the number one here, I press one. This is the uh, signal that is muted in the frequency domain, but not in the time domain. And I, uh, to make it easier to see, I use the arrow up key. I press it a couple of times, and here you can see when I'm saying something, there is a crack on the screen. And when I'm silent, there is nothing. But uh, if I tap on the microphone, you can see that surrounding uh, where there are significant signals, there are regions with fairly weak signals. Uh, I can do something about that. Uh, that is the muting in the time domain. Uh, so I can look at number six here, which is white and red, uh, and go for some severe muting uh, to the degree where the quality is not so good anymore. Let's say I now made uh, 70. And you can see on the tracks on the uh, screen that the signal is severely uh, distorted. And of course, uh, it can be heard on the loudspeaker signal, which I cannot hear now, but I will listen to this recording very soon. And now, I set another, maybe could be reasonable. This is 50 decibels. And uh, uh, perhaps this can be an acceptable quality. I will have uh, listen to it. It seems 60 is not a problem for invisibility, so I use that for this preliminary first setup of each process. Uh, the next step is to apply an ATC, automatic gate control. So that's the next menu when I press A for that. And uh, as you can see, there is no ATC action. Right zero over here. And uh, the suggestion up here is uh, set a suitable volume of the game to have some uh, ADC action. So I press B.
and uh, I can now see the ADC is uh, acting with up to 10 decibels. I have to re remove that loudspeaker because it starts to get into the microphone. Uh, 10 dB ADC acting is a little bit more than necessary, so uh, let's say uh, well, uh, I forgot what I'm saying when the track is not running, it's not going into the recording. So I try 13 and uh, I can see that the ADC is now in the order of uh, uh, very low levels, uh, below uh, uh, it's up to uh, 10 dB, but it's often uh, very low. So that is not enough. I press the and uh, maybe this is uh, reasonable. Uh, the ADC makes sure uh, that the signal is more or less always at the maximum level. Uh, and uh, you can see the crest factor if I say A, uh, that is 5 dB. The peak power here you can see it is zero. It means we are at the full transmitter output power. Uh, so this uh, is a reasonable setup. The next step is the RF clipping, that is C. Uh, and we want some RF clipping. Uh, clipped. Uh, clipped spectrum. Uh, let's go back to A. Uh, the Time function uh, with ADC and clipped, that is 6. Ah, uh, hello. And I have to use the arrow because I want, want to have clipping on the, uh, on the display function. And when clipping, oh, I can whistle. Uh, you don't see it, but it is clipping, and uh, to a level of up to 6 decibels or something. And when I say A, uh, the crest factor is only 2 decibels. It means that the uh, peak power is only 2 decibels below uh, the peak power. Now, uh, after having run through the clipper, it's necessary to apply a filter. And the filter is going to uh, distort the waveform and increase the peak power. That's called the repeaking. So again, A, A, O, You can see there's about one and a half dB. So it is necessary to apply ALC uh, to remove that re-peaking. And uh, let's see, first there is the C here, where I can set the amount of RF clipping, and this gain, 6 decibels, seems to be reasonable because it gives a suitable clipping level. And then P, uh, it does, it allows me to change the ALC time constant. It's set to two and a half millisecond now, and that could be reasonable. Uh, I think I have shown the effects of the ALC with the signal generators in a previous video. It's not so easy to demonstrate with a voice signal. But uh, the result that we have now is when I'm talking, you can see that the peak level is zero. It means we are precisely at the full power. Uh, 
uh, and not always. But if you look at the crest factor, that is the peak to average power, a o e, uh, it's fairly high, and that's the purpose of the process. It is about bringing up the average power uh, without making the speech uh, difficult to understand. After having listened to this, uh, I decided that the clipping in the time domain was a little bit too hard. So now I am put the clipping to 50 decibels instead. And I think this is a reasonable speech processor setup uh, for, let's say, contesting and uh, similar situations. So I press S. Uh, that made uh, this recorded as a speech processor mode, mode 01. Uh, and then I press plus and go for some different modes, that is C. Uh, and let's make a hard RF clipping. That would be for uh, weak signal communication like VHF, when the signal is fighting uh, white noise only. Uh, it can be severely distorted, but we want to bring up the average power as high as possible. So I increase the gain. It's now 6 decibels. I make it, let's say, uh, uh, 25 decibels. That is... 19 dB more, uh, press B, so now there is a lot of clipping, and you can see that the track is uh, very much at the full level, and uh, what it sounds like I cannot say, because I cannot listen to this here, I have to uh, move the recording to another computer and listen at it. But uh, you can see that the peak power is very much uh, zero while I'm talking most, most of the time. And the crest factor, and while I'm saying almost anything, the crest factor is very high. It's in the order of 3 dB always. And this means that there is a lot of power in the signal now, and of course it's distorted. Uh, but I don't think it's very difficult to copy. It's not distorted uh, to that extent yet. So now I can press S to save these uh, rather extreme uh, parameters for DX mode. Uh, as SSD pros uh, 001, the normal were saved as 00. So that is S. And you could see the parameters while S was, uh, but I could not speak during that time because what you hear now goes through the Linrod speech processor. I will now uh, press plus. And this is now for the SSB PROS 02, and I will set completely different parameters for that. This will be the local high fidelity setting. First, uh, remove the RF clipper, that's B, like that. And then remove the AGC. Uh, the AGC activity is uh, up to 17 dB, but uh, not often. So uh, I change the volume to uh, maybe 4 dB. 
uh, there could be a little uh, ADC, as you can see, occasionally. Uh, this will not distort uh, noticeably, but it ensures that the signal level doesn't drop too low. And then, of course, uh, I don't want any muting in the high fidelity mode. So now there is a linear processing, but the bandwidth is rather limited. That's under the M menu for the sound card. Uh, so let's look at the filter. That's here. The down arrow, because the graphics uh, can limit in a false way. But this is what it looks like. Uh, so I changed the upper frequency to, let's say, 5 kilohertz. And uh, this is a very high amplification on the highest frequencies, so very little on the lowest. I removed a slope of 6 decibels per kilohertz. So now it's a flat response, but there is some suppression of low frequencies. So that's B. And now it's flat. And I make the lowest frequency lower. Like that. So this could be um, something for local traffic. And uh, you can see that the peak power uh, still reaches zero uh, occasionally. Ah, but the crest factor uh, is usually maybe 10 dB or at maximum 7 dB or something. But I've, I can whistle in the microphone. And I cannot whistle so well, but uh, uh, when whistling, the uh, crest factor can come very close to zero, and the peak power could be very close to zero as well. So this is uh, local settings for uh, the processing mode number two. I press S here. I have now added some noise from an FM radio to simulate the noise from a transmitter with a fan on it. Uh, I will now, this is the local high fidelity mode, uh, I will add some AGC. That's A and uh, press V. And uh, you can hear that when, I, when I'm talking, I get back uh, a reasonable signal-to-noise ratio. But uh, very quickly, the background noise comes up. I can make the time constant a little bit longer. Five seconds instead of one second. So you can hear how the noise comes up uh, fairly slowly uh, while the AGC meter goes down. 
So this is the drawback of using too much ADC. I can make the time constant uh, short. Actually zero. And I switch off. And uh, an ADC with time constant uh, zero is uh, fairly similar to uh, clipping. Uh, but uh, by having the ADC as a separate thing, uh, I can ensure that the amount of clipping becomes the same even if the signal into the microphone uh, varies a little bit. And a suitable constant for the time uh, could be one second or so. There is one more thing to worry about, and that is the size of the FFT. It's now uh, spanning five milliseconds. Uh, that's the shortest uh, that can be used. And there are some little artifacts from that because the transforms are pretty small. Uh, it would be better to do filtering in the time domain. But I wrote this a long time ago before I was clear about those problems. So what I can do is to press U. And now I have uh, lengthened the transforms to 10 milliseconds. And uh, press M and 5 here to look at the filter. And uh, you can see that the corners are sharper here, which means that there is less signal energy on the sharp uh, cornered. It's only these three bins involved. And those generate the artifacts. But the problem is that delay is now quite a bit longer. Uh, something like 70 milliseconds. I have now headphones and I hear my delayed voice. And it is a little bit difficult to talk properly because it's an echo, uh, 70 milliseconds. And I can still do it with full volume in, to my ears. In the real mode, uh, the receiver would be quieted, so there would be silence for my own voice. But I would hear other stations in the gaps uh, that are muted in the signal. I hope this video has brought some idea about what the Linrad speech processor is. I don't think it is very different from normal speech processing in SSB. There is uh, first a filter, then there is an AGC, and after that there is a clipper, and after the clipper there is a filter, and after the filter there is an ALC that I haven't talked about. The only thing I can set on the ALC uh, is the ALC time constant. And uh, this is not the right place to talk about that. I will do a setup sometime in the future uh, where the effect of the ALC time constant on the emitted spectrum will be visible. 
So, if you haven't seen the previous uh, video on uh, the Leonrad speech processor, where I was just using sine waves and KID sine waves, uh, go and have a look at it, uh, because it shows some other aspects of uh, this processing. I hope that uh, the uh, interface for the setup with all the information that you can get out, and I haven't described it too well yet, I will make some more videos in the future uh, showing how to use this in real situations.